Is there anything better than a pumpkin spice matcha? I think not. And cheers to our polyphenols because guess what? I didn't even say hello to you, hello. I need to sit down because I need to show you this, but let me show you something and let me tell you because this is so exciting. So as you know, I had like five different doctors tell me that I had the lowest progesterone they've ever seen. And I was put on progesterone. I never was in a normal progesterone range. And for a long time, I had no idea. I had no idea that spotting before periods, breast tenderness, even headaches around your periods, PMS, hormonal breakouts. I would always get like a huge breakout on my chin every single month, like the deepest, most painful breakout every single month without fail hormonal acne, painful periods. I, how, how could I forget that? I had the worst, most painful periods. Every single month they were getting worse. Now I have pain-free periods. It's literally insane. And I never thought that was even a possibility. But anyway, for the longest time, I just thought, okay, well the solution to my low progesterone is to just take progesterone. That's what I was told, that's what I was put on. But nothing, nothing ever got my numbers into a healthy range. That's the thing, that never fixed the root problem of why my body wasn't making enough of it on its own by itself. Why wasn't my body able to make this hormone? So in April of 2023, so a few months after I miscarried, I did my very first at home gut test. So when I learned, when I went back to school, that every single thing comes down to the cell, everything changed for me because our cells make up our tissues, make up our organs, which make up our organ system, the endocrine system, our reproductive organs, everything comes down to the cell. So then that begs the question, okay, well then what do cells need to function properly so that we can have healthier cells and that can make healthier tissues and that can make healthier organs? How many times can I say the levels of organization? Even at the time, this is so crazy. So let me pull up my very first one that I did. So at the time, my metabolic fitness, they give you a score on your metabolic fitness of your gut and mine was average. Mine was literally right in the middle. It was an average score. That is when I ended up doing a more advanced GI test and I found out, and this is where it's all gonna connect. I found out, and this is where it's gonna connect with hormones and all the things. So hold on if you're like, what is happening? I did a more advanced test and I found out in my gut that I had a low, very good bacteria called Ackermansia. And Ackermansia is a keystone bacteria in the gut that actually helps our body with glucose metabolism, so sugar metabolism. It helps our body actually manage our blood sugar. It is very, very essential that we have enough acromancia in the gut. It's very, very protective of a lot of different things, metabolically speaking. So basically, our cells, what that means is our cells handle glucose well, and that is exactly what we want. We want the cells to handle glucose well, because if we don't, and we have you know, we're not handling glucose well, and then there's way too much insulin, and then what can happen? We have insulin resistance, and then the follicle doesn't develop properly, and then we get anovulation, and when we don't ovulate, we don't make progesterone. So you're like, oh my gosh, that was a lot. But that's the thing is that very, very simply, when we feed the good bacteria in our gut, it allows our cells to utilize glucose well, and when we utilize glucose well, everything else gets affected, including our hormones. If we don't ovulate because we're not handling glucose well, and we have a lack of diversity specifically in the gut, and we have very low acromancia, that is going to be the first thing that we wanna focus on. And for a long time, I didn't know that, the gut test really revealed that. So I had super low progesterone, obviously it caused a tremendous heartbreak in my life. I was literally at like a one point something when I miscarried, such a low number. It really was a miracle that I was able to conceive, it really was, and our little baby star completely changed the trajectory of my life. This is the thing, instead of focusing on the progesterone, I just started focusing on making healthy cells, making happier, healthier cells in my body. For the longest time, I was like trying to balance my hormones, but I never got anywhere. So I focus on making healthier cells by looking at, okay, well, what does my body need? And my body needs this acromancia. So how do I almost spill that? How do I, how do I nurture this acromancia? So what I learned is the one food that acromancia specifically loves is polyphenols. It loves polyphenols. And so earlier this year, I started drinking matcha every single day. And unbeknownst to me, Matcha was, it is extremely high in polyphenols and I was having a few cups of matcha a day and on my temperature band, 
it, I remember it was like, I can't remember if it was a month. I think it was like the month later. You remember if you saw that video, I had such an amazing ovulation that month. Like the spike was incredible. I had never seen anything like that. And I was like, what in the world? And that's when I was like, that's when I made the connection. I was like, oh my gosh, I've been having the matcha. And I looked into it and I already had had that low acromancia. And then I found out that the polyphenols feed it. And then I thought, oh my gosh, this is making everything make sense. My temperatures were higher. My ovulation was better. And I was like, this is incredible because when our body handles, when our body handles glucose, well, we are going to have strong, better ovulation because the cells are healthier and et cetera, et cetera. So the one thing that you can do every single day to fuel and nourish the good bacteria in your gut is simply consume polyphenols. And matcha is my personal favorite way to do that. And it takes a while. It takes, here's the thing with acromancy, it takes persistency and it takes consistent. You, It loves it every single day. This is what I was gonna say. So I took another gut test this month and I just got my results back. And as I told you, my metabolic fitness last time was average. And this time I just got my results back. And this time my metabolic fitness is in the good range. I am in the green zone. I am so incredibly happy about that because this is the thing, and I've even heard this from so many people, that acromancia can take a really, really long time to really reestablish in the gut. And my levels were literally at like a zero. Like I had none, I had no detectable acromancia in my GI map. It was literally at like the furthest, the furthest to the left that it possibly could be on the whole chart. It says this score represents active microbial organisms and functions that are associated with your blood sugar, insulin resistance, or weight control. A good score in the green zone, and I am in the green zone now, means high activity of microbes and their functions favorably associated with your metabolic fitness. I am so, so, so excited persistence. That's the thing. When you know something like I can know that acromancia loves polyphenols, but then seeing it that month in my, on my basal body temperature chart, because I chart it with my little armband that takes my temperature every night. And then also now seeing the improvement, even on my gut test. I already love my matcha. I was already, I'm already hooked. I'm already hooked. Like I'm not, I can't get more hooked, but I just got more hooked. I just got more hooked. I will never not be amazed at just the natural foods that God created. And I am so just, and the reason that I tell you this is not because I'm even excited. It's so funny. Of course, of course, I'm so excited to see progress and results, but I'm telling you this because literally from that very moment of the moment that I lost my baby and that pain that I felt and I, I, that was the moment that I knew I just wanted to, literally somehow some way be able to help other women so that they their stories might be different because of mine and so you know it's not it's not just about the matcha you know i get super fired up over it and excited but it's so so much deeper than that and if i can share something with you that that i genuinely have seen a difference in my body now i've seen a difference on my temperature chart and now i've seen a difference on my gut test you know if you're like oh that's me you know i'm struggling with hormones and i need to nourish my gut Oh, and nothing will be peak matcha. I remember, I think it was four years ago now that one of my friends, she went on like a search for the best matcha and she was like, I want something that's pesticide free and mold free and just the, the, just the highest quality, best tasting, best tasting matcha. And it was peak, it was peak. And yeah, peak's matcha is hands down my absolute favorite because they, they're mold free, they're pesticide free, they are ceremonial grade, they're organic and the thing that's unique about theirs is that they shade it for longer. They shade their matcha leaves for longer. So that it actually has a higher chlorophyll content. And the chlorophyll is actually super nourishing for our liver because it's really high in copper. But that's what really gives your skin that really clear, glowy look to it. A lot of the times when people are like, oh my gosh, I started having matcha and I saw such huge changes in my skin. That is why. And Peaks Matcha specifically has a way higher chlorophyll content. It's just such unbeatable quality. Like it's amazing and the taste is amazing. If you're wanting to try matcha and you're not too sure about the taste, Peaks is the best that I've ever had and is so smooth and delicious. And also it has L-theanine in it, which is a very unique amino acid really found abundantly in matcha. And that's a very calming, very, very calming, very calming amino acid 
that that's a lot of the times why people feel really good switching from coffee to matcha like me. I just fell in love with it and fell in love with the taste and I accidentally stopped drinking coffee, but then I noticed, wow, I actually don't get the jitters. You know, that's been a huge benefit to me too because my body literally feels less stress, which is also going to impact your hormones when you're more relaxed. I don't have a racing heart anymore and they are giving you, yet again, perfect, I'm like, perfect timing, and they are giving you 15% off of your purchase plus a free rechargeable frother and a cute little cup so that you can have your matcha, your frother, and I will leave the link in the description box at the top of the description box. That to me is what speaks of the quality that I'm truly seeing those changes even in my gut test of like this really is loaded with those polyphenols and I am seeing that good bacteria come back, which is just amazing. I'm so happy. I love, love, love Peak so much. I have been drinking it now consistently, I think since, was it February or March? I feel like this year is flying by so months and months and months and I have seen nothing but continued improvement in my body, in my temperature, in my gut tests. Like I'm just so elated. <laughs> Share that update with you. I was so excited about that. Thanks, honey. We have our bone broth rice. We have avocado and then we have your famous... Traeger chicken. Oh yeah. Mm. Great, huh? Oh yeah. I like chicken thighs. Chicken thighs are really high in B6. We need B6 to make progesterone. Okay, I just got finished with my workout. What a glorious Sunday. Such a beautiful October day. I thought we would do a little fitness challenge. I read this and I thought for our little fitness fall challenge or fall fitness challenges because fall fitness but really it's a fall movement challenge more than anything movement can be golfing gardening sweeping mowing shoveling sanding cleaning dancing boxing fencing walking bouncing on a mini trampoline taking the stairs biking rowing going uphill and anything else that makes you move and makes you sweat pump the lymphatic sewers of your body clean. And that's what she was talking about, this doctor, I'm reading a book on mold, and you know, just the usual, just the just a light Sunday read. But she was talking about how the lymphatic system is like our body's sewer system, and toxins get dumped into the lymph, and how we clean out the sewer system is through movement and, ex and exercise, moving the body, moving our muscle, using our muscle tissue. It's not just gonna be a fitness challenge, it's gonna be a wellness challenge. I wanna challenge us to move, but also do other things that I really think will be supportive for this time of year. So number one, the first thing is getting your steps. Get your steps in however way that you wanna do it. I think it, I used to really underestimate how many steps that I took every single day. And when I actually took a look at how many I was getting, I usually was only getting about 5,000 steps a day. 
and they consider anything under 5,000 as to be sedentary. I really do think a good number to start at is 7,000 if you're not regularly walking yet. If you are regularly walking, I think that 10,000 really is such a sweet spot. You're really staying active. So that's our first goal of the challenge is to move, get your steps. I'm gonna be aiming for 10,000 ever since I got my my wall, my walker, my, my under the desk treadmill. I have gotten every single day 10,000 steps. It has been life changing for me. But for me personally, and this is gonna move into our goal number two, getting outside every single morning. Every morning, preferably before 9 a.m., you are getting that morning sunlight in your eyes. That is number two. Circadian rhythm and our circadian rhythm health is one of the most important things for our body. Easter's gonna be participating in the wellness challenge. Do you wanna wear your pedometer? Okay, now, if you're like, I don't wanna wake up for sunrise, I don't wanna do that, that is what I'm challenging myself to do. It, it was two years ago that I walked to the beach every single day. That was the month that I conceived our little baby star. And really that changed everything for me, the trajectory of my life completely. But it is incredibly interesting to me that I conceived the month that I was walking the beach at sunrise every single day that that was the month that I conceived. It is so interesting. The more that I study circadian health and circadian rhythms and the body making progesterone and, and literally the light and our hypothalamus, it's, it's so insane. That is my challenge. That's why this morning I got up and I did my sunrise walk and I am telling you, it completely changed my whole entire day. That is the goal for this challenge is movement, getting your steps, actually moving your body, getting enough steps every single day, and then light, getting morning sunlight. If you don't wanna get up at sunrise, getting outside right when you wake up and preferably before 9 a.m. Going out there for just five to 10 minutes, it sets our wake cycle so that we can produce melatonin later. So just get outside and get your, we'll call it sunrise medicine. Number two is sunrise medicine. And again, if you don't wanna get up at sunrise, just get outside before 9 a.m. for five to 10 minutes every single day. Number three is to dim the lights. After, when it, it's getting darker earlier, and really optimizing your home for, again, your to support your circadian rhythm. So this is the perfect time of year to utilize those candles, get your candles out, make the coconut wax candles, beeswax candles that I showed earlier a few videos ago. I just switched out all of our, and our, our home is very cozy, so I know it's not necessarily, like you don't have to go Maybe if you want to, but you don't have to go on and switch out all of your light bulbs in your house. But the overhead light, this is the per like to turn that off. This is the perfect time to turn off those overhead lights and get the lights more to eye level, if you will. Like get out candles, get little lamps. I, I just switched all of our little lamps around here to no, no blue light right at sunset. We switch those on, all the big overhead lights go off, and we really optimize our home to go to sleep because sleep is one of the most fundamental, is the fundamental, the foundational thing for wellness is getting good sleep. So number three is we have our sunset, we'll call it sunset medicine, okay? We have our sunrise medicine, we have our sunset medicine. So after sunset, we dim the lights, we bust out the candles, we turn off the overhead lighting, and we get ourselves prepared for a good night's sleep. Last but not least, no, let's do two more, because I think this one needs to be said, is water. Making sure that you drink enough water. If you're not drinking enough water, and you're not in the habit of drinking, I really do think that I was taught, even as a nutritional therapy practitioner, to just like let people drink water when they're thirsty, but I found that like so many people are just not drinking enough water. They'd be just drinking like maybe 16 to 20 ounces of water every single day. And our blood is made of mostly water and our body literally needs to have enough water so that we don't have super concentrated glucose. I mean, for so many different reasons, we need to be drinking enough water. So I think a good rule of thumb is either eight glasses of water a day or half of your body weight in ounces. Now you can pick and choose, but it's so important to drink at least eight glasses of water every single day. And if you're not in the habit of doing that, make this the challenge to do that. And then last but not least is pick a form of movement that you like to do. For me, I am getting back into like hot infrared classes again. 
which I'm so excited about. They're like sculpt classes, so you go into like a heated, I'm really just craving sweat right now. I really wanna sweat. So I'm gonna do that a couple times a week. And then again, today I just went over and did the spin bike. I'm just doing things that feel really good to my body to do. Pick a form of movement that you like other than getting your steps and just do it. It literally does not have to be anything fancy. It doesn't have to be even classes. It can literally be like if you have the wellness method, you can do the workouts inside of there. If you, you can do anything, you can literally do anything that you want. But I think a really good rule of thumb is like 30 minutes at least four to five times a week where you're getting your heart rate up, you're moving your body, you're sweating, and you're feeling good while you're doing it. I think that you should genuinely listen to your body, but I'll give you an example. I'm gonna be weight training probably Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. And then, so my weight training, full body weight training for about an hour, including warm up and cool down. And then a couple times a week, I'm gonna be doing those little infrared sculpt classes where it's much less like heavy weights and more like abs, more body weight movement, but really sweating. So for me, it's gonna be about five days a week. Then of course, sometimes I will run over to the gym and also do like, I'll get on the spin bike for a little bit, you know, just, just staying active. That is my schedule. I think that weight training is really, Really, really important and I would say that that is a really really amazing thing to do to build muscle tissue that's a little fall fitness wellness challenge I am so excited I'm just I'll be sharing all of it with you for the rest of this season I'll be taking you to my workout classes and just showing you what I'm doing and showing you me staying active maybe I'll do like a what I eat in a week and how I train in a week because it feels really nice to just get back into this and kind of be doing it together you can totally tag me on Instagram or let me know in the comments how how it's been going for you. I definitely want to like make this like we're doing it together. So tag me in your sunrises, tag me with your dim candles, tag me when you're with your sweat. I can't wait to do this with you. It's going to be so fun. I'm totally going to be doing like little giveaway prizes too. Guess. <laughs> Did you get the water? Yeah. Okay, wait, I'm adding on one more thing. Something that I recently started doing, which I've mentioned, I think I've mentioned a couple times now. Recently, I started memorizing scripture and it has been the, the best thing that I've ever done. It has been the best thing that I've ever done. Even this morning as I walked the beach, I was reciting and just kind of like, re, you know, memorizing. I was really memorizing it, solidifying it in my brain, practicing it even as I walked the beach and just listened to the waves. And it was the most restorative thing to my soul. That is something that I am doing this season. I'm kind of going at the pace of like one not even necessarily one verse, but like one scripture chunk a week-ish. And sometimes it's a verse, sometimes it, that's the thing. There's no like hard and fast rules. That being said, for today's giveaway, I thought I would give you a copy of Milk and Honey. This is a devotional that I wrote that is like a devotional journey through scripture to savor the goodness of God. It goes through Genesis, all the way to Revelation, and it really takes you through in bite-sized pieces of the scripture, one scripture for each book. So there's 66 devotions, and it is such a nourishing book. I mean, even, I gotta say, and I'm being honest with you, I picked this up the other day, and I was having a really hard day, and I opened it up, and it literally God used in a way that I think only God can do my own words that really he enabled me by his grace to write that literally completely just it it like it filled me with his love and it filled me with truth it changed how I felt that day and I love this book so much it's such a little treasure it really is like pleasant words are like a honeycomb sweet to the soul and health to the bones I hope that it helps you to taste the goodness of God in every season and circumstance in your life and what a gift this was to me even a couple months later after I finished writing it that is when I found out I was pregnant with our little baby star and very shortly after I miscarried and honestly this book genuinely I really believe was was a gift to me that God almost knew that I was going to need before before that ever 
before that ever even happened. And okay, my card filled up, but anyway, you're gonna get a copy of Milk and Honey. I love the cover so much. I love everything about this book. And all you have to do is just leave a comment. You can literally let me know if you're in for our little fall fitness wellness challenge and just say, I'm in. I love you so much. I'm so excited to spend the rest of this season with you. Don't forget, you can use the link at the top of the description box and get your peak matcha, the peak sun goddess matcha. It's literally the best. I came home and I made a matcha after my beach walk and I just love peak so much. They're the purest, the best, no mold, no pesticides, ceremonial grade, organic, the best tasting. If you're afraid and you're like, I've never had matcha before, I don't know, it is the cleanest, smoothest, yummiest, most delicious matcha. Follow one of my recipes, make the pumpkin spice matcha. Whatever you do, Peaks Matcha is my favorite. It's my favorite way to get polyphenol. So link in the top of the description box. I love you so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye.